I'm here now at Fort Foot in Prince George's County, Maryland, the site of one of the best preserved Civil War forts in the region. After the battle between the Monitor and the Merrimack in March of 1862, there was a panic in Washington due to the lack of naval defenses to protect from an ironclad attack. The only fort on the Potomac at the time was Fort Washington, about 16 miles below the capital, which was thought to be too far to protect the city from a naval attack. With an attack on Washington from the river now a major concern, this fort and Battery Rogers on the Virginia side of the river were built, with both completed in 1863. Fort Foote was named after Rear Admiral Andrew Foote, who helped U.S. Grant in the capture of Fort Henry and Fort Donelson out west. The defenses of the fort consisted primarily of 30-pounder and 200-pounder Parrot rifles, but most notable were the two 15-inch Rodman cannons such as the one behind me. As you can see, these cannon are enormous and capable of sending a solid shot or shell weighing several hundred pounds for more than three miles, more than sufficient to stop any ironclad that might venture up the Potomac. These smoothbore guns were designed by Thomas Rodman, who designed a special procedure for casting them that prevented them from exploding, as was common in cannons of the past. Fort Foot sits on a bluff about 100 feet above the river, so it took three or 400 men to drag these 25-ton cannons into position here. The fort was garrisoned by several companies of New York heavy artillerymen, commanded by William Seward, Jr., the son of the Secretary of War, William Seward. Seward came to visit quite often, including one time accompanied by President Lincoln himself. This fort never saw action during the war, and the troops stationed here spent most of their day working and drilling. This fort is unique for being the only fort in the defenses of Washington that was not immediately abandoned after the war. It served as a prison in 1878 and 79, and was the site of several experiments with a new recoil carriage for the giant Rodman gun. The garrison was, was removed in 1878, but the site remained under military control. It was also used as a training camp for officer candidates during World War II, before being turned over to the National Park Service, under whose protection it remains today.